What's going on, people? Here to talk to you about the New Deal. I read a lot of papers. I watch a lot of documentaries. And we are in one of the most innovative, technologically advanced, over-the-top, crazy, exciting opportunities exist in under every rock. Points in time of history. It's never been this good, yet it's never been this bad. There are many, many people who are strictly ass out and losing hope by the day. And I sit back and I wonder what makes me so optimistic compared to someone else. So think about it. I was like, okay, what is it that you are digesting that gives you such hope for the future? such enthusiasm, such energy and enthusiasm for the future, and many other people dread waking up every day. And I thought about it, and I thought about it, and it's definitely the New Deal. I'm not talking about FDR's New Deal. I am talking about the New Deal that technology and the internet has ushered into the world. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday in terms of success, opportunities, connections. Understand, the internet is not, didn't level the playing field. The internet is a new playing field. It's a completely different playing field. It's a completely different set of opportunities. And there is some meshing between the old economy and the new economy. But I know of, and I've studied people that have made eight figures strictly online with no foot or hand or anything in the old economy. There are websites, there are groups, there are fan bases here online that you don't even know about that are generating people money. Then I go back and I ask myself another question. Okay, you know this. It's on the internet. Anyone can access this information. Why aren't people accessing information? Why aren't there more people as happy as I am about the future? Then I ask another question. Do these people even know the right questions to ask? Then it gets deeper. We live in a society that teaches people to be permission-based opportunists. Meaning someone must give you our permission for you to take advantage of an opportunity. If you don't have permission, you feel perhaps the opportunity is not an opportunity. Perhaps the opportunity isn't yours or somehow it's shady or somehow it's unethical. Go into my number one video. You know, large sums of money in storage units. The comments on that video are crazy. We have been led to believe, and I want you to think about this. When you understand the rule of law, the rule of law, you buy a storage unit. Now, there's two things that's going on. You buy a storage unit, right? The unit legally goes up for auction due to the lien process. You buy that unit, and there is an very expensive payoff for you in that unit. But say the payoff is a car that was stolen. Say the payoff was a large sum of cash. Due to the high value, people tend to become alarmed because the higher the value, the more worthwhile it is for the system to reach out and try to snatch it or something to happen. I've seen this several times where a unit had really nice stuff. The person lost the unit and then they went to court 
even though the storage facility followed all of the proper procedures and policy to sell that unit and it got held up because of value now we are taught that value is something that you must have permission to get how many times have you heard someone's like say because we live in a weird economy we got two groups of people we got people who feel that they don't deserve things and we have a, over a large group of people that feel they deserve things they have not earned but you've heard people say well i didn't deserve that i didn't earn that uh, typically these people are going to be older because that is the world that we grew up in but with this permission-based society many people are waiting for approval to be successful if that approval does not come then they won't be successful and the approval is not coming now the deal with this is with the new economy the new deal internet technology it doesn't require approval it requires initiative it requires radical thinking it requires hustle it requires a different mindset but it does not require approval and many many people are missing this I love watching young internet entrepreneurs and I'm not talking about the Mark Zuckerbergs or the guys who did PayPal or the guys who I'm not talking about those guys I am talking about this kid who started putting up stuff created a website and bought himself a Ferrari at the age of 20 with money he earned maybe a millionaire may not I don't know but he's clearly and there, there's a lot of cases like this with kids you know sometimes in high school I'll uh, take Michelle fans who, who was one of the who was the first makeup tutorial guru on YouTube and these young people have leveraged doing stuff thinking differently into large sums of income they don't know that they must ask permission to be successful I want you to think about that and I, I give you their ages not to make you feel bad about yourself or to go oh I missed the boat if you're thinking like that then you have larger problems than I can help you understand what I want you to understand is at those ages they don't have years and years and years of experience they don't have it some do might say a kid who starts coding at 10 and creates a company at 20 he's got a decade of experience but I have seen and this is I study this and this is one of the reasons that I changed the direction that I run my business and I changed my training I've literally seen people start companies from nothing and get to seven eight figures in four years strictly using internet protocols that's crazy exciting crazy exciting because the promise of the internet is this every day something new is coming up new technology new platform new social media many of these things are going to fail and that's cool but there will be some that will succeed if you learn because there's a guy I don't know him and from what I gathered well I actually listened to him on a, on a webcast a webinar this guy learned the ins and outs of LinkedIn wrote a book about it gave uh, webinars talks about it and he created a seven-figure business over the course of I believe I think this is his six or seven year he did that from home he did that from home you can take a platform and learn the ins and outs of it and become a I'm not gonna say an instant authoritative voice for that platform but you can do it rapidly you can do it very very rapidly and rapidly being a matter of weeks or months you can do that that's exciting but I see and I see it a lot with people that I consult with people that I train is many many people are seeking and waiting for approval and validation that is 90% of their a problem in terms of being successful 90% of it seeking an approval and validation and it's stunningly eerie when I see it because there are times 
that I will do a consult with someone. I will talk to that person for 45 minutes. And it's the last 15 minutes is when the, the jewels start dropping. It's when the magic jelly beans start raining all over the place. Because what I'm learning as a consultant is I must ask better questions to get the better answers. You can ask a lot of questions, but if you don't ask the right question in the right context, you can miss something. I learned that in sales. You have to ask the right question. You have to talk to the right person because many people don't realize that they don't even know the right question to ask. And that is functional ignorance. When you don't know the right question to ask, you're not going to get there unless you ask a bunch of wrong questions. Because you're like, okay, that didn't work. That didn't work. That yielded this bad result. Then you start like, oh, instead of go talking to the secretary. Give you an example. When I was in direct sales, I, I really think that every business person who put themselves in the position of being in a serious sales occupation for two years will have so much of an advantage over someone else starting a business. I mean, just the, the tools that you developed from doing that. When I started off as a salesman, I realized I had issues. I read a lot of books, cold calling, closing techniques. I was sitting in an office waiting on this guy that I set up an appointment for. And this office, was the walls were thin. And I hear people next door talking. And they're talking about the project. And my memory is really good. And I'm hearing these voices, but I don't hear the voice of the guy that I have a meeting with. And I'm sitting there like, my spotty sense just went all off. I was like, something is wrong here. So being the person that I am, for some reason, I think during that time period when I was in the boarding house, I got out of my permission-based, approval-based action plan. You know, I didn't need approval. I didn't need permission. I didn't need uh, validation. One of my favorite sayings is, I much rather ask for, ask for forgiveness than ask for permission. So I got up and I went next door. Door was closed. Knocked on the door. <laughs> the guy opens the door with the craziest look on his face. May I help you? And I said, No, but I can help you. My name is Glendon Cameron. And what you're talking about actually is going to cost you more money than what you think it should. And he said, oh, come on in. Because I didn't get in there. He didn't open up the door because I was Glendon Cameron. He opened up the door because I presented value. Because I heard it. Because they were talking. And the thing is, they were talking raw. Talking raw was, I was getting great information that I wouldn't have got during the normal interview process. I said, okay, this is the deal. You want to do the telecom systems. You want to do this. You can do a mixture of new and used and no one would know the difference. Put your money where it needs to go. That would be your reception area. That would be your conference room. Unless you're going to have a bunch of tours in your call center, no one's going to see that. So why are you going to pay 1500 bucks for a workstation when you can pay 350 to 400 for the same workstation that will function just the same? And they looked at each other. Tell us more. So I'm talking to the guys. I'm, I'm charting out numbers. I'm like pulling up samples. And then the guy that I have the appointment with, he they call him in. And he's like, oh, you're Glennon? I thought you had canceled on me. I didn't hear from you. I said, no, I got to the right people. Have a seat. And th that's one thing I learned. A lot of times in a sales situation, you can take control of the room. And it works in your favor to do so. Because I had no use for him at that point. But if I was still the person waiting for approval and permission, I never would have had the initiative to knock on the door, introduce myself. Because the, the beautiful thing about this is I was able to solve a problem for them for real. Or as like one of my friends like to say, for real, for real, for real. I actually had solutions that they can use that would benefit them. It wasn't a sale. It was an explanation of how I could save them a shitload of money. I left out of that office with a deposit check for $150,000 because I got to the right people at the right time because the main guy didn't even, wasn't even um, stationed here in Atlanta. 
his home office was Indiana. He was only going to be here for a matter of hours. So in this new economy, you have to take advantage of the opportunities versus waiting for someone to say, hey, there's an opportunity over there. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got your name on it. Lift it up. See, your name's on it. You, you can't do that. And that's why so many people are upset, disenfranchised, and are not excited. Because they're still waiting for permission to be successful. They're waiting for approval. And if you're an entrepreneur doing something different and new, you're waiting for validation from friends and family. If I can give you a bit of advice, when you have a service, a product, go to strangers first and friends second. Go to, go to strangers first and friends. Learn to talk to strangers. Learn to introduce yourself. Learn to pitch people. That's where it sells. Because each sales call was a pitch. That's what it was. You were pitching. Benefits, features. You were pitching. You got to learn how to pitch. When you are a guy and you see this gorgeous girl and you walk over, you are pitching. When you are a woman and you see this girl and you want to be part of their committee, you go over and introduce yourself, you are pitching. Everyone needs to learn how to pitch. Every time I do a video and I put something in or I mention something, I am pitching. It's a constant thing because you need people and you need to learn how to pitch to people. You need to learn how to ingratiate yourself to people as fast as possible. I'll, I'll give you some dirty information for guys. And this is something that a lot of people don't know. When you meet a woman, she makes some decisions about you in about 15 seconds. It's not really a conscious, it's more like a semi-conscious, semi-subconscious thing, but certain decisions are made about you immediately. And if you know what those decisions are, hopefully they're favorable for you, you can go very far with that woman. But if you do like most guys who, what I called, this kind of, this kind of goes back to the validation thing. This goes back to seeking approval. You put yourself, and this is even a business lesson, and a lot of people do this. They'll create a product, service, or something, and then hope that the society or whatever will approve. They'll, 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 like they'll hope they're approved. Then when society doesn't approve, they try to convince society, the guy, the girl, whatever, that they should approve this when society, the guy, the girl, has already made this decision that they disapprove of this product, service, or person. So essentially, what you're doing is swimming uphill with half your flipper tied behind your back. Now, when you learn how to get past the permission and the validation thing, because that's what you're seeking, you're seeking validation. You change people's perception of you. There are many, many people on YouTube who can't stand my black ass. Fuck you. Yeah, I had to get that there. But that's not going to stop me from making YouTube videos. That's not going to stop me from pitching. That's not going to stop me from saying, hey, I'm Glendon Cameron. I do this stuff. I believe it can help you be successful. That's what I'm going to keep pitching. Because there's a group of people, great people, awesome people, who love my black ass. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. And I'm crafting my message for those people. I do not craft my message for haters because it's a waste of time. Why waste energy trying to convince people who've already made a firm decision that they should change their decision when there are other people who are saying, give me more? Do you understand what I'm going? You have to learn how to get past these words, validation, permission, and approval. 
you approve your own damn self and you put your stuff out there. I'll give you another example of someone that proved himself and built a market. Howard Stern. Talk about someone that people can't stand. There's a, a lot of people that can't stand him, but there's a lot of people that love him. And what I'm telling you is your service, product, or whatever, there's there's a crowd that, that you know, if you did your marketing, if you you know you built something that a lot of people want, there's a market for it. it may not be a big market. It may not be a market that can create a lifestyle for you, but there's a market for it. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's taking leaves and putting them on paper and making leaf etchings. There's a market for it. So learn to approve yourself. Learn to validate yourself. Learn to actually think that you, have, you give yourself permission. Think that you're worthy that you can have this stuff, that you can be successful because the new economy does not require permission. There are no gatekeepers. I do publishing. I could not do what I did in the last five years, 10 years prior because there were gatekeepers. I had to get permission of the publishing industry. I had to get permission of an agent. I, I don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. There's a market. It's your job to validate, approve, and permit yourself to find it. All right, this is Glendon Cameron, and I'll see you on the good side.